Welcome to our lecture online. So far we talked about vector products, but now we also will talk about what we call scalar product. Remember, vector products were the products between two vectors so that the result of that product was another vector. A scalar product, the name kind of gives it away, is a product between two vectors so that the result is actually a scalar, a non-vector quantity. So here we have two vectors and there's an angle of theta between them. And so what do, do we mean by the scalar product A dot B? Notice we use a dot instead of the cross symbol. Well, it turns out by definition, A, A dot B, as we say sometimes, or the dot product or scalar product between A and B is equal to the magnitude of A times the magnitude of B times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. So notice that when we do a scalar product, the result is a scalar. Well, one way to look at it is we see these two vectors here is what do we mean by a cosine b? Let me rewrite that. So we write this as a times the cosine of theta times b. What is this quantity equal to? Well, that quantity, in essence, is a projection from the vector a onto the vector b. If we draw a perpendicular line from the tip of vector a down to vector b, then this length right here, which we can call the projection of a on b, is has a length of a times the cosine of theta. Notice when the cosine of theta, when theta goes to zero, then the length, then the projection here is equal to the length of a. In other words, if theta is equal to zero, the cosine of theta is one, and we get a times b. It's simply the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. On the other hand, if the angle becomes 90 degrees, then the projection of a onto b is zero because the cosine of, of 90 degrees is zero, and therefore, a dot b, or the scalar product between a and b, is going to give you a zero for an answer because the projection of a will be zero onto b. So another way of looking at it would then be the following. So this can then be written as, let me go ahead and use some color here. So let's take this here, this quantity right here. This will then be a times the cosine of theta. And so the vector product between any two vectors is simply the magnitude of the projection of the, of the one vector times the magnitude of the other vector. Now you say, well, why do we need these kind of products? Why do we need a scalar product? Well, there's all kinds of applications. One of the applications, for example, would be if you were to drag a box across the ground. So let's say that we pull on the box and we use a force in this direction. So this would be the force F. And let's say that the force makes an angle of theta relative to the horizontal. And let's say that the box then gets dragged across the floor a distance d. And so let, this would then be the displacement, and we'll call it the vector d. We can then say that the work done by the force, the work done by the force, is equal to the, the what we call the dot product or the scalar product. It will simply be f dot d. And that, of course, will be equal to the magnitude of f times the magnitude of d times the cosine of the angle between them. So you see that there's a real physical meaning behind dot products or scalar products. And again, notice that f, f times the cosine of theta would be the projection of the f vector onto the displacement vector. And so let's draw that right here. If we then draw a projection like this, we can then say that this quantity right here is simply f times the cosine of theta. It is the component in the same direction as d, and that component multiplied times d will give you the work done by that force to give you a physical example of how we can apply scalar products. So that's by definition scalar products, and in the next videos we'll show you how to actually apply scalar products in mechanical engineering.